Hello and welcome to this session of our uh, Tocharian module. My name is Hannes Fellner and I'm from the University of Vienna where I worked at the comprehensive edition of Tocharian Manuscript and I'm currently conducting my own project on paleography of Tarim Brahmi, the variant of the Indian Brahmi system that, as you saw in the introduction by my colleague Yad Kaling, was used by the Tocharian speakers. In this video, we'll treat some aspects of the synchronic phonology of the Tocharian languages. We'll have a look at a phonological inventory of the two Tocharian languages, starting with vowels and diphthongs, followed by consonants, and finally, look at the prominent phonological process in the two Tocharian languages. So let's take a look at the vowels first. Both uh, Tocharian languages have a five vowel inventory system. There is no phonological contrast in length, as you can see. Let's look at the chart more closely. The square brackets here are indicating how the vowel is written in the transcription of Tocharian texts. Let's start uh, from the top here. Um, so here we have E as high front vowel and uh, U as high back vowel. They can be written long and short, as you can see in the Brahmi writing system. But again, this has nothing to do with phonological length. Uh, the spelling with long e and long u may actually be connected to stress, which will be treated uh, in the next session. Um, as mid vowels, um, we have uh, the front mid vowel e here uh, and uh, the central mid vowel uh, schwa, uh, pronounced e, and the back mid vowel o here. And finally, um, as the uh, low central vowel, we have A ah, down here. As you can see, schwa and A ah have different phonetic uh, realizations and different ways of writing them. And this is connected uh, uh, with the stress system of Tocharian B uh, and a very prominent feature which will be treated in the next session. One of the renderings uh, of schwa in the writing system is the so-called Fremdzeichen, about which you learned in the introduction. In the transliteration, it is written with an A, uh, a German umlaut style, uh, with two dots on top. Uh, schwa, ö, is what we believe that this vowel was in the phonological system, and schwa, ö, is how this vowel uh, is pronounced when reading Tocharian texts. However, uh, you may hear uh, scholars in the German-speaking world, uh, sometimes also me, pronounce our Fremdzeichen, the schwa, as ü. And this pronunciation is connected to the famous Göttingen School of Tocharian Studies. Uh, here in Göttingen, one of the people working on Tocharian was the Indropianist Wolfgang Krause. At the time uh, uh, Krause was dealing with Tocharian here, uh, he uh, was already blind. And so had people pronounced the Fremdzeichen as Ü uh, to have it clearly distinguished uh, from other mid -vowels. Uh, but it should actually not be pronounced as ü, but as schwa. So let's turn back to our inventory again. Diphthongs only occur in Tocharian B. Um, from the historical perspective, uh, this is an archaism compared to Tocharian A, uh, where all the inherited diphthongs from Proto-Tocharian monophthongized. Um, so let's look at the diphthongs here. As you can see, Tocharian B only has rising diphthongs, um, so going uh, from uh, left here, uh, down A, A, I, OI. And then here from the right, EU, EU, AU and O. So let's have a look at the consonants. Uh, this uh, again is the inventory for both languages, which is very convenient. And this chart is arranged uh, in the classic way uh, of the IPA, the International Phonetic Association. Um, we have uh, places of articulation uh, up here. And uh, we have the manners of articulation uh, down here. One striking feature of the overall system is that there are no distinctions uh, in voicing or aspiration that we know and love from the classical languages like Vedic Sanskrit and Homeric Greek. These uh, contrasts were already lost on the way from Proto-European to Proto-Tocharian. So if we start uh, from the top right um, with uh, the nasals, uh, so here we have m, n, the palatal ny, and the velar ng. 
Um, coming down to the stops, we have P, T, the palatal CH, the velar K, and the labiovelar uh, QU, for which there are different orthographical variants in uh, Tocharian, as you can see, indicated in the square brackets. Uh, moving down, we go to the affricate, and we have the dental affricate Z. Further down, the fricatives, uh, we have three fricatives, S, retroflex, SH, and palatal SH. Then moving on to the approximants, we have Y and W. Then we have uh, an R sound, and very likely this was a trilled R, so a R. And finally, uh, we have two laterals. The one is a plain uh, L, and the other is its uh, palatal equivalent, uh, namely a uh, lieu. So, uh, this is the inventory uh, of the of both Tocharian languages, the consonant inventory. And uh, now uh, we will have a look at the prominent um, synchronic phonological process, namely um, palatalization. So this chart here uh, gives you an overview of the process of palatalization. Uh, and as you can uh, already see from this chart, it's connected with um, the uh, morphophonology of Tocharian. So we have n, n, uh, which contrasts uh, kaun de and kaun yi uh, days. Or we have t, ch, which contrasts third singular present tunmaster uh, from third singular uh, subjunctive uh, chmetter. Uh, will be born. We have k, sh, nominative singular liak, thief, nominative plural uh, lushi. We have l, li, uh, contrasting third singular subjunctive laman, uh, will sit from third singular preterite liama, set. And we have sk, sh, uh, contrasting third uh, singular present weskau, speak, from third singular present weshen, uh, speaks. If we look at uh, the palatalization patterns in Tocharian A, and these are the most prominent ones, um, we have kind of the same uh, system. And uh, you can see here in the examples that I chose uh, that they're basically cognate, so they're completely uh, um, similar and related to what we find in Tocharian B. Um, here, uh, as an example for palatalization, um, we uh, will look at the Tocharian text. Um, if you look uh, up here um, to the right, you can see uh, the uh, fairly complicated uh, call number here. So TB, of course, means Tocharian B. Um, Ketom here refers uh, to the online comprehensive edition of Tocharian manuscripts. Uh, PKRS7E is the press mark of the manuscript, and PK is uh, the abbreviation for uh, Pelio Kuchen. Uh, the sinologist Paul Pelio, after which this is named, was one of the people who brought Tocharian texts uh, to Europe at the beginning of the 20th uh, century. Uh, and Kuchen, of course, is, is the French name for Tocharian B, uh, the language of Kutcher, as you saw. Kuchinje is the endonym of Tocharian uh, B speakers, so speakers of the city of uh, Kutcher. Um, so, this short passage uh, that you can see is taken from uh, the collection of Tocharian manuscripts at the Bibliothèque Nationale, and this is what the PK indicates. Um, I will read uh, this text uh, uh, to you. So, Chaikurinta Wirshamna Chmentri Onolmi, Schneitsche Osne Tunmaskentri Ekninjesa Menkice. If these beings will be reborn somehow among humans, they are reborn in a poor house lacking possession. Well, first, this sounds a little bit strange, but as you already know, Tocharian texts are predominantly Buddhist, and our passage here is from the Karma Vibhanga, the classification of acts, which deals with the consequences of good and evil deeds for future births. For our purposes here, we are interested in uh, the verbs, namely this here, Chmentru. Um, they will be reborn, third pl plural subjunctive middle of the root tum, be born. And the other verb, tunmaskentur, um, 
which uh, is uh, they are uh, reborn uh, from the same root tum to be born. So both belong to the same root tum with different morphological features in the subjunctive and in the present. And the feature of the subjunctive of this root is palatalization of the underlying T uh, to the palatal J. Thank you for your attention. Uh, in the next session, we'll be looking at the Tocharian B accent system.